Hello friends and welcome. Just wanted to come on here real quick today and finish up our lesson from the other day, uh, but also kind of touch on a topic that a lot of channels are talking about. Um, with the Super Bowl, I guess there's going to be some tests with 5G, maybe even 6G within the stadium. Everything's going to be cashless. And people are saying, well, that's going to turn folks into zombies somehow. It's not a topic that I love to talk about. However, uh, we have touched on it perhaps in the stars in the past. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what we see. Now, previously, and I'll just bring this up real quick, we looked at the zombie comet. And that's just a comet that lost its fire. It's kind of banging around out there. Uh, and supposedly it has the face of a skull. So this is in the media today. So I thought, well, why not just take a look? It's called 2015 TB 145. Okay. And this story um, was, uh, yeah, 2015 Halloween. So if we come over here, uh, again, this is going to be a different program. This is Star Walk 2, just because I can look up comets directly using it. And it's over here, this comet near Microscopium. Now, we saw previously that it had been near Scutum. The shield, let me see if I can pull that up, at the same time that the fifth seal opened. And so it was hanging out there right along with uh, Venus. Oh, right here, Scutum when it went into conjunction with the sun. Again, this was just a f about a month ago, a month and a week ago. It's now over here near Microscopium. And you may be wondering why that sounds familiar. Well, let's go ahead and do a search on that one moment. So what we last time when we were looking at this, what we found was that our Antichrist comet, comet A1 Leonard, was in this same exact vicinity. So I'm not sure there seems to be some significance here in terms of what could be playing out. So it's definitely something to pray about, to consider. And that's all that we're doing here is just bringing information to the body, to the community, so that we can be watchful and prayerful uh, with knowledge and understanding. Again, we're not saying, you know, the rapture is imminent. It's not, I don't think it's going to happen for months and months. Uh, but we are looking for some very significant things to occur. Now, um, let, and we'll touch on that in just a second. All right. So th this is where we are right now. We've just seen a conjunction with Saturn, the fourth horseman, and the sun. And I was surprised to see the Tao have a major drop. We anticipated that the Tao would start dropping when Mercury got to its furthest point in um, and started coming back toward the sun. We thought that that might cause some more trouble with the markets, uh, but it was actually another horseman that brought that about. So it's giving us some context here, an idea of how the sun will interact with the horsemen and maybe how the horsemen will interact with each other. We're gonna have a chance to observe that coming up with Venus and Mars when they go into a near conjunction along with Vesta and the moon. And we'll head over here to Stellarium and take a look at how that might play out. Again, I, I have no affiliation with this program at all. It's just free and it's something that we can use and look at together. I'm gonna take a look at Venus. <clears throat> All right, so Venus is still over here. Uh, not that it has just been over here. Let's go to full screen. Uh, since the opening of the fifth seal, I mean, it's got a very close orbit with the sun. Oh, actually, okay, it looks like it was there for the majority of that time. Uh, and now it's going to be coming back toward the sun. 
just like Mercury, only it, its orbit is further out. So we also have Mars right here. They're very close together, and we're going to see Vesta and the moon. Let's do a search for Vesta, and that's what some would call a minor planet or a, a very large asteroid. And then we were looking at the moon here as well. There we go, let's see. And this was on the 15th, so the moon should be popping up here. Let's just go ahead and do a search for it. So the moon's gonna be joining this party later on this week. All right, I guess a little further on. So this will definitely give us an opportunity to see how these horsemen are interacting. And again, we're not hoping for anything bad to happen, but we are trying to study the signs of the times. Now, with our last study, we were looking at the two witnesses and just noted that all of these other characters in the book of Revelation, they are symbolic. So if we are interpreting the two witnesses as two literal people, we're just considering, is that the proper route to take or is it symbolic of something else, such as the planets that were bringing along with them all of the plagues that we saw during the uh, Egypt, the Exodus timetable. So let's take a look. Um, we were looking at other false prophets in the Bible just to prepare for what could very well be happening during Passover with what we've seen the last couple of years, a Messiah figure coming out of Israel or, you know, wherever it could come next. It's hard to say. But we're trying to prepare ourselves against that because Jesus made it very clear in Matthew 24 that anybody could be deceived, even the elect, if it's possible, could be deceived. So we're praying against those things. And I just, I can't stress this enough. It's going to happen. People that we love and trust and rely on now, those relationships are going to change. Will they be sharp changes or gradual We'll see. Um, but again, all of this will be approached prayerfully. So in terms of what to expect coming up, again, we are going to have a Venus and Red Horseman or Mars conjunction in Sagittarius. Then the Black and the Pale Horseman, Mercury and Saturn will be going into conjunction in Aquarius. And then we're going to see Jupiter, the first horseman, going into conjunction with the sun, uh, perhaps expect some changes with the mandates or the virus, some sort of event. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, and then we're looking for, like we saw in the last video, Comet C-2017-03, the false prophet com comet that appears like a lamb, goes near Aries, but speaks like a dragon and winds up going right in to Dra uh, Draco later on in July. And then we're looking for a conjunction between Neptune, again, the seven planets represent the seven seals. So when Neptune goes into conjunction with the sun, we are looking not necessarily for a big bang. You know, with COVID, it wasn't a big bang with the first horseman, it was gradual. So we'll see how these things play out. There are prophecies out there that <clears throat> this may really come into fruition over Passover about a month later. Um, so if you want to take a look, perhaps uh, looking at a war in heaven with a conjunction between Mars and heaven with Satan being cast to the earth. Um, and then the false prophet, when this comment that we just mentioned, C-2021-03, uh, goes into conjunction with the sun. And we had that over here, looking at maybe some movement early March, and then definitely keeping an eye mid-April to see how that manifests. 
And we can take a look at that real quick again. Starting from today, we're going to look up the sun. And then as we follow the sun, we're going to see this comet just kind of up here. All right, so we've actually got it queued up right here. It's about to enter into Pisces, which Fishers of Men represents the church. And it's never going to actually enter that constellation. It goes down to Cetus, the water beast, or beast from the water, instead, which may be a reference to Revelation 13, the beast that comes from the water being the Antichrist. It goes right into its head or throat mouthpiece perhaps symbolic of and then to the feet of taurus our judgment constellation near aries the lamb and then right over here to the feet of perseus he's holding on to the head of the woman who had hair like serpents medusa after conquering her so not a good sign for the false prophet by god's grace um and then last week we talked about the one hour that these kings or ten rulers are going to give their power to actually let me go back to that one to the antichrist here it is in verse 12 and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast and we correlated that with Revelation 7 and saw that there is silence for a half hour in the heavens. Let me bring that up. And actually, excuse me, that is Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And again, looking at the two uh, planets Neptune and Uranus uh, representing the sixth and seventh seal if we look at that time space or excuse me looking at Uranus and the first four trumpets that half hour between those two looking at that time space I said six months last time it's actually going to be seven months according to these calculations and when I thought about that I thought yeah that should make a lot of sense Anybody who has listened to Chuck Missler knows that the number seven is used repeatedly throughout the book of Revelation. We've got the seven thunders, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven vials, the you know, seven over and over and over again in this book. Uh, and we can look at that ourselves. But staying on topic today, looking at the deception that we can expect to come, uh, there is a story in the Old Testament in 1 Kings about a young prophet that God called to pronounce judgment against a kingdom. So let's see what happened with that. Verse 1 of 1 Kings chapter 13. And behold, Lord, please bless the hearing of your word. There came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. Okay, listen, church. Bethel is a very prominent name when it comes to these mega churches. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when Jer King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar 
also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it were before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Okay, pay attention. Verse 11, Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, somebody that he may have heard of before, some perhaps someone that he had looked up to. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. And went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. So he's doing really well. He's doing a great job. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, no turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast did obey, disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the Lord, in the, the place of of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the donkey to it, for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him, and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. And he spake to his sons, saying, Saddle me the ass. And they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way. And the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God, and laid it upon the ass, and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass after he had buried him, that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulchre, wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places, which are in the cities of Samaria, shall surely come to pass. 
After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people priests of the high places, whosoever would be consecrated him, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing became sin in the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. All right, so that chapter is jam-packed with all sorts of lessons there. <clears throat> Jeroboam himself, being the king of the northern kingdom, after Solomon, uh, the kingdom of Israel was torn into two separate kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The ruler of the no northern kingdom was Jeroboam, Solomon's son via a concubine. He had no royal claim to the throne at all. And then there was Rehoboam, who was to inherit the throne, but the people rejected him because of his folly, his foolishness. So we see here a very obedient man of God who was very faithful in delivering his message, but then got tricked by somebody who portrayed himself as a man of God, uh, perhaps he was a man of God, but was just being wicked at the moment. I don't know if he ever repented or not. But this younger prophet, um, perhaps if he would have left without eating the bread or, or doing whatever with this older prophet, maybe he could have repented and just been on his way and nothing bad would have happened. Just God could have forgiven him, perhaps. I don't know. But that's not what happened. He stayed. He enjoyed the meal, the fair, and it cost him his life. So it, it caused, you know, his testimony to just really go downhill in the, in the eyes of the king and the people because obviously he didn't believe what he had said, whether it was true or not. Jeroboam had the opportunity to just reject it, just reject God. And the kingdom suffered for it. So let's go ahead and we got some time, but actually I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap it up for this lesson just because I'm kind of crunched with time today. Um, I do want to finish that thought. I realize I hadn't finished it. Talking about the half hour being seven months and seeing that we've got the seventh seal here. And then we're going to see the opening of first four trumpets late in December. If we consider, and I'm still, you know, praying over this, that the full hour will be 14 months that these kings, these rulers from Revelation 17 give unto the beast, then do you know this time period could only be 14 months and i believe that that's going to look like the well let me hold off on that let me let me study that a little bit more let's go ahead and close with some scripture and actually i think i can go ahead and say it i think that those 14 months will be up until the sounding of the sixth trumpet where the 200 million entity army comes into play. Uh, it could be that the Antichrist figure can still rule through the fifth trumpet, even though these demonic locust beings will be attacking the people via the fifth, uh, fifth trumpet that we see in Revelation chapter nine. There is a chance that he can still rule through that, but trying to rule in the midst of a 200 million entity army that's going to war with you. Um, I don't know how that's going to play out. Could be that they're on the same side. Uh, it may not be because there's been a lot of, you know, lessons and, and prophecies and demonstrations of division in the Antichrist beast system already. And that could play forward uh, into this time period. So it could be, you know, that the days for the rule of the Antichrist will be shortened and they won't be 
the three and a half years mentioned in Revelation 13. It could be more like 14 months just because this 200 million entity army uh, will not be managed, will not be manageable by the Antichrist. So let's go ahead. I'll let you take a look at the rest of the timeline and let's look at some scripture. Lord, please bless the hearing of your word. Song of songs. Oh, beautiful. We're coming on to Valentine's Day. Of course, he's going to give us something beautiful and special. <clears throat> Chapter seven of the uh, Song of Songs. And we've got verse five here. Your head crowns you like Mount Carmel. Your hair is like royal tapestry. The king is held captive by its tresses. How beautiful you are and how pleasing, O oh love, with your delights. Your stature is like that of the palm and your breasts like clusters of fruit. I said, I will climb the palm tree. I will take hold of its fruit. May your breasts be like the clusters of the vine <clears throat> and the fragrance of your breath like apples and your mouth like the best of wine. All right. <clears throat> So I hope that you all have a lovely Valentine's Day lined up. If you need to make some plans and preparations, you're not too late. You can do that now. Uh, let's go ahead and pray out. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that in the midst of these times, you still love us. You are still for us. Um, you, you don't change. You never, ever, ever change, God. And we're so grateful for that. Please help us to expand our thinking and embrace all sides of you all at once to the extent that we can. And just bless your name for being who you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. God bless.